Hello, you're joining us back at Dukascopy TV HQ. I'm Natalie MacDonald. Sharing her insight into the solar power industry, I'm joined by Eva from Avansol. Eva, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, it's nice being here. Now, the solar power industry has really ridden this wave in conscious efforts by businesses, schools, governments towards the use of greener energy. China really did sort of dominate this boom in terms of manufacturing, but we've seen SunTech Power, China's largest solar power maker, filing for bankruptcy last month. You've also got Canadian firm Canadian Solar, which is also nearing financial distress. Why are manufacturers beginning to struggle now? Well, it's a simple question of supply and demand. At the moment, uh, we have basically an overheated market with a large supply and the demand is ramping up, but ramping up too slowly. It's difficult to know what is the cause for that, but uh, whether the demand is uh, heating, uh, going, increasing too slowly or whether it's the supply that, that increased too quickly. But one thing is for sure that uh, China subsidized the energy market significantly and causing basically a race, uh, race to, to the death of uh, a lot of the manufacturing companies who at the current solar panel prices are just not competitive enough. One area where solar power growth is huge is in fact in Australia and this image here is taken from a solar power plant in southern Australia. We've seen growth there of 1000% in rooftop solar panels from 2009 through to now. Is there the potential of a boom bust situation here and how can the Australian government keep this momentum going? Boom busts in situations like this can be a problem, particularly uh, in solar though, we're in a good situation in Australia. Uh, we started with a lot of uh, panels that were subsidized by very good subsidies, thanks to a lot of uh, liberal governments uh, being very positive about solar five years ago. Uh, this enabled a great market environment with um, a lot of businesses uh, developing good efficient processes for, for installations along with a reduction in all the different processes required to install solar and uh, currently um, that those efficiencies are already in place and now in the future as already we have passed parity as in uh, the cost of uh, solar energy is actually paid back by energy prices without subsidies this uh, will continue be, to be a very attractive investment and as panels get cheaper and cheaper, which they will, um, the, the risk of this being uh, a bust is low in Australia. One area to watch at present is energy storage, which has been touted as the next big thing in the energy sector. The IHS claim that the solar storage market is set to grow from under 200 million US dollars in 2012 to 19 billion dollars in 2017. Can you explain the concept behind this and also the logistics of solar storage? Solar storage is a very interesting topic. Uh, it provides a stability to the grid that is actually pretty important. I mean, the negative uh, component of solar is that we have peaks in uh, maybe not unpredictable, but uh, very intense peaks during high sun, uh, sun hours. And uh, batteries enable to a little bit balance it out. The solution that is actually being provided right now is that they are the, uh, the installations are still connected to the grid, but the batteries enable a little bit of amortization in that peak. And uh, Germany, as an example, May 1st, implemented a subsidy for uh, storage for solar installations. Um, this, this is uh, something that we'll be seeing more of coming up in the future. So with all of this in mind, where do we see the solar power industry in three years' time? I think generally the solar industry is looking very positive. Um, we're looking at prices for solar panel installations going down significantly. We're expecting prices to go down as, uh, for an install as little as 1,500 uh, euros per kilowatt peak for, for the install. But the biggest advantage will be residential installs, which will are, are still succumb to the prices of, of their grid operator, which um, provide a significant savings for, for, for the installer. If a residential installer uh, can save uh, the price of electricity, which is continuously going up, 
um, then the, there's a very big incentive to, to go this way. And because we've already, we've already passed parity and because installation prices are, are going to continue to go down, this, uh, this will remain a positive investment uh, even without subsidies shortly. Emma, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. That's all we've got time for right now, but stay tuned for more exclusive interviews. Goodbye for now.